Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and thank you so so much for tuning in with me today. So in today's video I wanted to put on a full face of makeup with products from my collection that I totally forgot about. These products for some whatever reason ended up somewhere at the back of my drawers and they completely went under the radar. And if you do have a large collection of makeup like me you may understand where I'm coming from. So I decided to actually shop my stash today pulled some of these Ignore products out and showed them some attention. I also really wanted to find out what was the reason for me not reaching for them. Why did I forget about these, you know? And I really wanted to try them out to see if they actually deserve a lot more love or if they, you know, deserve to go back where they actually came from. But all in all, it's been such a hot, hot minute since I've used all of these products. So today was an adventure to say the least. So I really hope you guys are going to enjoy today's video. I hope you guys are going to enjoy the concept of today's video because honestly I could do more of these videos because I've got so much stuff that I completely forgot about. So if you do enjoy it today don't forget to like it. Also hit the subscribe button in case you have not yet and don't forget to ring the bell in order to get notified about my upcoming videos and don't forget to check out my description box where I always include some affiliate links and discount codes you guys know that is very much appreciated if you guys are using them and drop me a comment down below if you have had any products that you want to pull out yourself that you have not reached for in a hot hot minute I would be really curious to know what these products are but all right I don't want to make this intro too long so I would say without no further ado let's just go barefaced and let's kick it off with the very first product that I completely forgot about all right, you guys, so I'm barefaced right now and this is the basket where I put in all of these things that I completely forgot about. So I would say let's actually kick it off with the primer. So this is by Idan Minerals and this is the Iris Face Primer. I purchased this with the intention to actually film a second part of Idan Minerals Full Face because I've already filmed a part one. I did a full face with this brand. This is a brand from Sweden and I never had any of their primers. For some bizarre reason, I completely forgot to do so. I used this once or twice and I cannot remember if I liked this, how this was. I literally have no recollection on this product. So I thought, you know, we're gonna pull it out today and put it all over my face. So that's what we are going to be doing. I'm going to clip back my hair and then let's apply it. I mean, it still should be good because it has an expiry date after 24 months of opening it up. So let's get some product out. It is like charcoal gray. Let's see if this is hydrating, if this is blurring. I've got no clue what this is going to be doing. So let's do it on one side of my face. This really does feel like, almost like silicone-y, like really silky and smooth. This definitely goes on like silk. It's really beautiful. It's very smoothing. It's also not leaving a tack or anything. I feel like my skin got a little bit blurred. It also got a little bit mattified around here if you compare it to the side where I did not put any primer on yet. And it's not over the top silicone-y, like it feels a little bit silicone-y, like kind of like silky, like smoothing, yet hydrating. I don't think this is drying, this is not tugging my skin, it's not pulling it. It looks really nice, I've got to say, I really like it. So let's do the other side as well. So far, I really do enjoy this primer. It has literally kind of like blurred out my pores a little bit. It has smoothened my entire complexion. It feels really nice on the skin. It's not over the top hydrating and it's not over the top like mattifying. So it's somewhere in between, which is really lovely and very hard to find. Definitely a great primer for my skin type and also for my personal preferences because I never like it if a primer gives me a lot of glow or radiance. I really don't like it. I try to cancel out my shine and I feel like this has gotten rid of most of the shine on my face, which is good news to me. So let's actually continue 
with a foundation that I completely forgot about. So this is by Ilya Beauty and this is the True Skin Serum Foundation. Ilya is definitely no stranger to my channel. I have featured this brand multiple times in multiple videos. I've dedicated, I'm not sure how many full faces I've actually dedicated to this brand, but this foundation, I don't really have a clear recollection if I do like it or if I don't like it. And I also think that this has been reformulated by now. I do assume I have the old version of the foundation. I just remember that I did not fully enjoy the foundation. I think it was because it was too sort of luminous and radiant slash dewy on my skin. And it also sort of enhanced my texture, like my pores and stuff. And I just remember this not being completely up my alley, but I have not used this in such a long, long time. I just remember that once I picked up a new shade, because the shade I had was definitely too light for me. So I've got this now in the shade SF3 Taxil. Let's just put it on my skin and let's see uh, how I'm feeling about this. I gotta shake this one up because I do feel it's liquidy and I'm not sure if it's good anymore. I hope it's still good. Let's see. Oh, it's giving me something. It's like medium weight. I mean, it's going to run down my fingers now. I'm gonna use a brush for now and see. Let's just put it on one side of my face. Honestly, this smells kind of funky. It always had like this perfumey sort of scent to it. There is no synthetic fragrance in here. It's just the combination of essential oils that they were using in this product or just a combination of oils. And you guys know, I actually don't like essential oils or like an oil heavy foundation. So this might not be a good idea, but let's just try it. The shade looks very like peachy on me. I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but let's, you know, let's just blend it out and see. Honestly, it's not as lightweight as I thought it would be. It's still a little bit of like a creamier texture, but I can now see why I don't necessarily love this foundation that much. To be honest, the coverage though is really good. I did not remember it having that much coverage. Maybe back in the day, I did require a lot more coverage than now, because my skin has kind of like gotten a lot better over time. Um, I still need some coverage on my chin, obviously. It's always like the one spot on my face that is not quite like perfect just yet because my hormonal outbreaks will always happen on my chin. So that was a hormonal outbreak as well. Like I had to deal with that the past days, so which is a little bit annoying. But everywhere else, I do feel like it has given me a lot of coverage, like a solid medium coverage, to be honest with you. Um, the only thing that I straight away don't really like about this is the fact that it's so glowy and radiant. And also, as I remembered correctly, it does not sit very well on my like texture. And although I feel like the primer has smoothened out a lot of my texture already, I do feel like it's enhancing every pore on my face. So if you do enjoy something more radiant, something glowy, and you don't have any like pores or you don't have, I mean, you don't have any pores that are accentuated, deep set pores, pores that are visible, you know, to the eye, maybe you are gonna love it. You know, if you have like very smooth skin, the shade is okay. I'm not too mad at the shade. I think this is a much better shape match on my skin than my previous shade that I had. So yeah, let's actually do the other side of my face as well. I'm just using like two pumps. I'm really not sure how I'm feeling about this. Uh, I think maybe once it's powdered down, I prefer it a little bit better, but it's a heavy foundation, man. This is not like lightweight or anything, and it's looking super like wet. And I don't necessarily like that in a foundation, like this dewy sort of finish. I can just tell you with the brush, it's a lot. It's It, it looks like glowy, radiant, and heavy it really does look heavy on my skin really not like a traditional serum foundation after all i'm not sure if i really want to reach for this again or if today is the last time that i've reached for this 
we'll show and see how this is actually wearing on my skin. So anyway, we're still gonna proceed with a concealer because I do want to apply something on my under eye and this concealer for the life of me. I have zero recollection on how this was actually working out for me. I've got no idea. I completely forgot about this product. I was so surprised I even had this product in my collection. So this is by Uma Beauty and it's their Stay Woke Concealer. I've got this in the shade Fair Lady T1. No idea what undertone this is. No idea if this is a good shape match. I can't remember. All right, I'm gonna put it on my under eye. Might be a little bit light, the shade. Feels like a thick, creamy concealer. And I'm also gonna put it just on my nose. And a little bit on here. Because I really don't trust that foundation to keep up. All right, so I'm going to blend this one out with a dampened sponge. I definitely do need a shade that is deeper than this. This is definitely too light. That might be the reason why I never reached for this. It's because it's so light. But it's a nice concealer. I've got to say it's like more matte and it has a lot of coverage. Like most definitely a lot of coverage. Not over the top radiant or anything. It looks nice, but the shade is definitely wrong. So concealer is applied, so let's actually move on to the setting powder. Now in terms of setting powder, I wanted to use a powder, but then I realized it got discontinued and I really made sure that I would not use any sort of discontinued products in today's video. So I chose one that I did not necessarily forgot about completely, uh, I just ignored it. I have not used this in such a long, long time, but I do actually remember sort of liking the product. I just felt like it was a little bit overpriced. So this is by 100% Pure and this is their Bamboo Blur Powder. Let's actually use this one again because it's been a hot, hot minute since I've used this. And I mean, this is gonna mattify, okay? This is not something that is gonna give you any glow or anything. This is bamboo silica. And bamboo silica will always blur your face. It will mattify your face. And I love that ingredient. I really do enjoy a good blurring powder and also something that can set the makeup. And I do feel like my base is really heavy. Like I can feel it. Like this makeup I can feel on my skin and I don't want that. So let's actually set my under eye first and I'm gonna proceed and set my entire face. Or maybe let's do one side first. Yeah, let's do one side first of my face so you can see the difference. Like usually bamboo silica or any sort of silica powder, it's very finely milled, you know. Um, it's not grainy, it's not gritty or anything. So let's use a little bit and it's gonna also fly up. Like, you might be able to see that. I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but when I tap the net, it's kind of flying. It's very finely milled, this powder, like every bamboo silica powder that I have, kind of is like that. I mean, I really like this powder. This powder has really, like, blurred out everything. Just look at that difference. Wow. This is a very blurring, like mattifying powder without like giving you like cake face. The only thing that I do notice with this powder in comparison to my Fit Glow Beauty Bamboo Powder, apart from the price point, is the fact that this one, it's kind of a little bit more like white. So this might give you like a little bit of a white cast which I'm not the biggest fan of. And that's also why I do reach for the Fit Glow one over this one. So that's to the other side of my face as well. And this powder is so intense that it's almost like getting rid of the coverage from my foundation. So I can see redness poking through here a little bit more than before, before I set my face down. So it will definitely change the texture of your foundation. Maybe this was also not like the best foundation to use this powder with, but I really did need to mattify my face. So I do feel like in that sense, it really has done a great, great job. So let's actually continue with a bronzer that I never reach for. 
I even completely forgot I had this and I don't know why. So this is by Well People and it's their Bio-Based Baked Bronzer. So I've got this in the shade one and that one is called Natural Tan. I do think I've got the old packaging. I think they revamped their packaging by now. It must be like this white packaging looks a lot better. I mean, this does not look bad by any means, but here is the bronzer. I don't know why I never reached for this. I can't remember. I used this a couple of times and then it just got put aside and then I completely ignored it for some whatever reason. So let's put this on my skin. Let's bronze up my face. I'm not sure if this is pigmented or not. So I'm gonna just go in very gently with this. I also don't remember how the undertone of this is. I mean, it looks a little bit more neutral, but that can be quite deceiving. So I'm not sure what this is gonna be like, but let's just apply it. I've got to say, I really do enjoy the undertone of this bronzer. It's a little bit more neutral, still warm. It's really pretty. The only thing maybe why I did not use this that much, maybe it is a little bit patchier. Like maybe it's just like on my skin, it's maybe gripping a little bit more, making it a little bit more of a, a little bit of a patchier formula, but not to an extreme or anything. But I love the shade. The shade is amazing. And this baked formula, honestly, is also not over the top pigmented. Like I was able to build this up a little bit to my liking. I have to pull this out a lot more. This is actually great. Honestly, I was kind of contemplating to use a cream blush today, but I don't think I will. I don't think I will because of what we actually have laid down already, like the foundation, the powder. I'm not sure if I wanna go over this with a cream blush like I think we're just gonna stay true to the powders today so this is a powder blush that I actually used to use quite a lot I used this off camera I don't think I've ever featured this on my channel necessarily but I feel like there were so many other powder blushes that I gave priority to like my Jane Iredale powder blushes and my Lawless blushes I feel like I've showed them so much love that this one kind of just went under the radar but it's a really really good one so this is by gabriel cosmetics and it is their blush in the shade rose so i don't think i've talked about this brand a lot on my channel but i did try out some products like a couple of years ago by them and this was such an amazing blush i really loved this i just remembered really liking this but it's been a long time since i've used this so my brush actually does pick up some product so let's try a little bit i think i can build this one up This is quite pigmented, like it's not over the top pigmented, you know, the very first dip is not gonna like do a lot, but this builds up quite quickly, but it looks almost like airbrushed. It looks so diffused. What an amazing hidden gem this is though. Like if you're into powder blushes, give this formula a try because this is beautiful. Like it's really, really nice. All right, so my blush is applied. So let's actually put on some highlighters now. This was kind of weird because I do have a lot of highlighters that I completely forgot about. But the one I chose for today is actually a palette and I don't even remember ever using this. I must have used it once or twice because it looks like I've kind of used it or at least I've swatched it. But I cannot wrap my head around the fact that I completely forgot that I even had this product. So this is by Danessa Myricks. It's a light work, light shaping palette. So here is the palette. I mean, I love the packaging and everything. Such a cool, nice packaging. It's really heavy and sturdy as well. So here is the palette. I still have the protective foil like on my mirror still. Like this is so bizarre. I honestly forgot I had this. Like what's wrong with me? I don't know. But like, just look at that. That is a really stunning highlighting palette. And I kind of feel like for some bizarre reason, I'm kind of drawn to this shade right here, to this like 
more like a lavender sort of peri wrinkle shade like it's called piece of cake so i don't know what kind of reflection we are going to get from these are these metallic are these glittery i don't know so let's try them out actually All right so i'm going to use that shade piece of cake This is a very interesting formula because I can see it in my monitor reflecting, but with my eyes, like in real life, I can barely see it. I mean, I can see that I've put some powder on, but I think this might be like one of these highlighters that is like used for photography purposes, like more than for real life use. So that's interesting. I don't think I've got a lot of highlighters who actually do that. Um, but it's nice. So actually let's apply this shade also onto my nose. So this is not a glitter formula. I wasn't sure, but it's definitely not a glitter formula. I feel like it's a very beautiful sort of like reflective glow, like the kind of highlighters that I like. It has a very, very, very subtle lavender undertone, but it's almost not detectable. It's really more like an icy sort of highlighter, the ones that I really like. And I think this is beautiful. I really want to like try out like all of these shades now. Like this got me really excited. I like it. I like it, you guys. I really like it. And I'm going to put this on my desk as well so that I don't forget to use this because this is stunning. It's a nice one. And I love a good powder highlighter. So before we are going to do my eyebrows, I actually wanted to put on an eye primer and... I don't know, I completely forgot that I purchased this product. I've purchased this quite recently, but I cannot remember for the life of me how it actually performs. This is the Hourglass Veal Eye Primer. This also has some pigment. I always need something that gives me a little bit of concealing because I do have quite a lot of veins going through my eyelids. So let's actually take this out and let's try it out. I mean, I love my Kaleidos Eye Primer, so let's see how well this is performing. Oh, this does not have a lot of coverage, does it? Feels very silicone-y, very interesting texture. This is such a weird product. I don't really like it that much. It doesn't have enough coverage and it's almost it almost feels like it's gonna dry down. It's like a self-setting thing. Like, I mean, it has covered my lids to a certain degree, but it also got into my eyelashes and oh it feels kind of like almost it feels weird it feels like silicone when it goes on and then it kind of sets itself down i mean it feels kind of smoothing and stuff but it did not give me as much coverage as my kaleidos eye primer i'm not sure let's do the other side as well so yeah i gotta try this out again and see how I like it. I kind of forgot about it because I was just reaching for my Kaleidos eye primer all the time. And if I love an eye primer, I will only reach for that one product, you know, until it goes empty on me. And I just realized I completely forgot to put a brow pencil and a brow gel in this little basket right here. I don't know. Is there anything? I don't know if I actually have something that I don't reach for. Let me actually check. I probably do, but let me actually check. Okay, so this wasn't easy, but I actually found a pencil that I completely forgot I had. And that is by Airy Paris, and it's the Almond Brow Pencil. I've got this in the shade Perfect. So I'm just going to use a spoolie to brush through them. And I'm going to try and fill them in with that pencil, but I'm not sure if that is the correct shade. I have no idea what this is going to be like. And I don't know. Oh, it's working though. Hmm. It has not tried out to my surprise. It's very pigmented. It's almost like a creamy, but it's not like patchy or anything. I feel like it worked very, very well. So I'm not even sure, do I actually need a brow gel with this formula? So the only brow gel that I don't reach for that much that I still like, and I hope it's still good, is also by Airy Paris. So let's actually do my brows with Airy Paris today. So this is the Airy Paris Argan Brow Hero. This would be my favorite one 
after the Kosas one. So this is honestly not necessarily a product I never reach for because you can tell I reach for this. But I don't use it as much as my Kosas one. And to be honest, I don't have any other brow gel product that at this point in time would be safe to put in my brows. So let's actually just use this. It is such a bummer that this only comes in one shade. Not everyone has like deep brows. I feel like they should really make more shades available in this formula because it's a really good formula. I like it. It's more like a glossy like sort of eyebrow gel and I really love it. Okay, so my eyebrows are done. So what is actually my eye primer saying? The eye primer definitely has dried down. So I'm really curious to see how my eyeshadow is gonna look like on my eyelids and for today, I went through my eyeshadow drawer and there are a lot of eyeshadow palettes, but I chose this one in specific because I don't think I will ever use this for any other content, to be honest with you. And also, I was just so confused that I even had this palette. It completely has left the building that is my memory, completely. And I don't even know if I've ever used this palette. I think I used it once, but then I was not really happy with it and I don't understand why. So I'm gonna try and figure out today what is wrong with this palette and why I never reach for this because it's a stunning palette. But I do have my suspicions on why I'm not 100% happy with this palette and why I never reach for it. So this is the Lime Crime Venus XL2 palette. I purchased this palette years ago when this was hot and popular. I must have done a look back in 2019 with this or 2020. Honestly, I cannot remember anything about this palette. So let's actually have a look inside and let's have a look at the color story. The color story is really what drew me to this palette in the first place. It has a beautiful mix of like neutrals, like more like warm brown bronzy shades, some beautiful more sage colors, like these beautiful sort of green colors, like very muted. It also has some pinks. The color story in and of itself looks actually really stunning. It has a total of 18 shades and only five of them are matte shades. Maybe that was my big issue that when I opened this palette up, I did not really know what to do because the matte shades are a little bit incoherent with the color story. I've got this memory that this palette might have been a little bit too powdery or that it wasn't what I expected it to be, but this is also not an inexpensive palette. It's the only product I've got by this brand. I'm not sure what happened to this brand, but no one is really talking these days about Lime Crime anymore. Um, but back in the day, I do remember this being really, really popular and it's actually a stunning palette but there might be something wrong with this and we're about to find this out. So I just had a look at my phone because sometimes I do notes on certain palettes and I actually found a note on why I did not enjoy this palette. And I did a green sort of look with this with the shade Sage and the shade Obscure, like this shade Sage and the shade Obscure. And I noted down that the matte formula was super dry and that that shade Sage did look like mud on me. So I don't remember this. I don't remember the look. I'm not even sure if I continued doing the look. But today I feel like I'm gonna skip on these shades because I did not like them and I don't wanna ruin the look for today. So honestly, I think I'm just gonna do something with this warm toned brown, maybe with the shade classical, maybe even with the shade in bloom, I'm not sure. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know if I want to add pink. Let's actually start off with that shade Ripe, this one right here. And let's build this up in my crease a little bit. So this brown is very sort of warm. This formula is very dry. Like it has a lot of kickback when I like dip in my brush, they blend out okay. I feel like they are a little bit like you have to build them up and feather them out like a lot. I think I'm just gonna deepen out my outer crease like round here 
my outer corners, I'm gonna deepen them up with classical. Because honestly, classical is the deepest shade in the palette. And there is just no other option to deepen this one up, you know, nothing to do that with. So I'm just gonna use this. This looks like maybe like a reddish, like brown, deeper brown. Let's see what this is gonna do. These two blended in with each other so well. That looks really nice. It's more of like an auburn sort of brown. It definitely has somewhat of a red undertone. All right, so I'm going to pause the eye look right here just for a second because I do want to use an eyeliner. And there are definitely some eyeliners that I completely forgot I even had. And this is one of them. And that is the Fitco Beauty Vegan Eyeliner Pencil. I've got these in so many shades and for some whatever reason, I completely forgot that they were even in my collection. So I pulled out the shade Bronze which is, I'm not sure if this is shimmery for, I don't think this is shimmery, no. It's like a cool tone sort of brown eyeliner. I'm gonna use this in my waterline. I am not sure if I like this formula, if this is even going to stick in my waterline or not. I've got no idea. We shall see how this is working out for me. They are not very creamy, they are more on the dry side. I had to do a couple of swipes to actually get it to even show up. So I'm not sure if that's my favorite formula. Like maybe there was a reason why I never like reached for them. I just did not remember why I did not use them. But I feel like these might disappear. Like that's my biggest issue if a pencil formula is not like soft or like creamy enough and if it's not pigmented enough, usually it just won't stick and it's just gonna disappear. Let's see what this is going to be doing. All right, but let's continue the look and let's do something on my lower lash line. I mean, you know, there are not a lot of options here with the matte formula. I'm just gonna go with the shades that I was already putting down. I'm gonna use Ripe and then I'm gonna deepen out the outer lower lash line with the shade Classical. I mean, it's just brown, okay? What can I say? It's not the most like original sort of eye look ever as of right now. So what should I be doing next? That is the question. So for the outer corner, I think I'm gonna go with this shade. That is the shade Thorn. Let me actually swatch that a little bit before I'm putting down anything. That looks like a metallic, like more like, sort of like bronzy with a little bit of like pink. Should we do that? I'm not sure how it's going to look on my eyes, but I'm just going to use it a little bit. This barely has any like pigment. These are so, 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 so like dry. This has no base pigment, but it has blue shimmer. Did not expect that. This is more like a topper shade, but it really does not look like that. On my finger. Oh. Okay, well, I'm just gonna put on this other shade here called West. Maybe this has a little bit more base pigment. Yeah, let's use that. And then maybe let's top it off with that shade Thorn. Oh yeah, okay, this has some pigment. So the shade West really just looks like a little bit more like a bronzy satin. Again, not really what I was anticipating to do. So let's actually continue with the shade Ivy, because this shade was the shade that I initially wanted to play with today. So I'm just gonna put this all over. I'm not sure if this has any base pigment or not, but I'm just gonna try and use this. This is like a really nice sort of green with some kind of like pinky shimmer in it. Let's see how this is gonna look like all over my lids. I mean, it looks so pretty on my finger, but then on my eyes, it just has zero shine. It's very lackluster. And it looks gold, like that's so bizarre. I. 
don't understand. So this shimmer looks so dry. It has zero impact. It is very lackluster. And it looks so nice in the pan, but on my eyes this was really not what I wanted to go for. How can we save this look? I'm just gonna try and, you know, use the shade Myth now because I'm out of ideas. I don't know what to do anymore. This is not a formula that I like. These are so dry, so lackluster, although they look so nice in the pan. Like, there was a reason why I did not reach for this, apparently. So let's try this Myth shade and let's try and save this look. This is not it. This is the weirdest, strangest palette ever. Like, what on earth? I mean, if I blend them out, this is not looking nice. This is so texture enhancing. What else can I do? At this point in time, I don't even care. Let's do Thorn, that topper shade with the blue. Like, I'm just gonna do whatever now because I need to get something on my lids and this is just ugly. Will this save the look? This might be the most stunning looking palette in the world, but it's the worst once applied. I hate it. I don't like it. I'm just gonna like accentuate my inner corners with the shade Radiant. I'm very suspicious. Yeah, I don't even think this is gonna do anything. Ugh. I don't like it like I really don't like nothing looks good like these shimmers are so texture enhancing they are so lackluster I really thought they would do something I I'm so shocked I, I don't even know what to say at this point I'm so shocked at this eyeshadow palette so honestly this is a big no it looks stunning packaging is beautiful I really like this but this is gonna end up being decluttered because I will never reach for this palette ever again. I've got so many eyeshadow palettes that are so, so, so much better. And there was definitely a reason why I pushed this all the way back into my drawer. This was at the very end of it. And maybe I put it there because I did not enjoy it at all. All right, you guys, but my eye look is unfortunately it's done because I don't really want to mess around with this any longer because it's just so ugly. So um, I'm going to move on to the mascara. And now for mascaras, you guys, I'm not going to have a mascara opened up that I don't necessarily reach for because, you know, all of these mascaras that I don't reach for, they have expired by now. Because mascaras do expire after six months of opening them up. But luckily, there's actually a mascara that I have recently purchased that has not expired. But for some bizarre reason, I have not reached for it as much as I would like. It's a really, really good mascara for a decent price as well. So this is by Pacifica Beauty. It's the Activist Volume Mascara. And I also feel like I have not featured this on my channel just yet. And therefore I kind of want to put it on today. It comes in a glass packaging as well. And here is the brush. The brush is slightly like curved. This is supposed to volumize and to curl your lashes. I'm gonna curl my lashes though with the lash curler and then apply the mascara and then I'll let you know what I'm feeling about this. Again, this is a little bit of a newer product to me, but I need to reach for this a little bit more because I feel like I'm neglecting this because I've got some other mascaras that I constantly reach for. So I definitely have to give this one a little bit of attention. I knew I would enjoy it, but I just forgot to reach for it recently. So this is a really good one by Pacifica. It's actually really nice. I mean, it's not the most lengthening one. It's not the most volumizing one, but you know, my lashes look acceptable, nice for everyday life. It's not clumpy. It's not like difficult to apply. And I think this is a really good formula. All right, so let's actually move on to the last step. Let's put something on my lips. Now, again, with lip products, I don't really want to reach for stuff that 
is really old because I don't want to get like something around my lips. My lips are very sensitive. So I've got to be careful not to use something that is completely expired on my lips. But I pulled this one out because this is like a recent purchase, like a couple of months ago. So this is by Wonder Beauty and it's the Lip Retreat Oil. So I actually had this product like years ago in a different shade, but then Wonder Beauty decided to add some shades and I remember really loving this product. So I've got this in the shade Tan Lines. I'm actually going to use a lip liner that I also completely forgot that I had. Like my eyeliner, I completely forgot I had Ficlo Beauty's lip liner formula. So I've got this one right here and I think it's going to match the Wonder Beauty one quite well. This is the shade Nude. I think this might be the best option. Let me actually just swatch these together. All right, so I'm gonna use the shade Nude just to line my lips with. I can't remember anything about this formula. I must have used this once or twice and then I completely forgot about it. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it or not. Not sure if this did do anything. I feel like it's super light. It's a very light lip liner. Usually I prefer something a little bit more contoury on my lips. I feel like this one is just a little bit lame, the shade nude. I don't know. It's also not very creamy. But let's go back to this lip oil because I know I really like this formula. So let's apply this. I really like this. I had this in a shade called Skinny Dip. So let's try out the shade Tan Lines. I think this is more of like maybe a little bit more brown movie. Let's see what this is going to do. I completely forgot I had this. I can't believe it because I really like this formula. I bought it and then I kind of got distracted by so many other lip products that I completely forgot about this. So today is the day. Let's put it on. It feels so nourishing, it feels so hydrating, so juicy on the lips, mm, so cushiony, it's not tacky, it's not sticky, it's just so beautiful. It's also very reflective, but these do have a good amount of pigment. So this is my finished look, like reaching for all of these products that I completely forgot about. So let's do a little bit of a roundup. So let's start off with the primer. The primer is great. I really did enjoy the primer. I'm gonna use this a lot more in the future. I definitely do wanna try this out with different foundations. Then the foundation itself, Ilya. I don't really like this. This looks okay just because I used the powder, but to be honest, it kind of gives me strawberry skin. Like all of my pores are enhanced. My entire texture is showing through and usually bamboo silica will be able to blur everything, but I think this foundation is just not for me. It's just not sitting well on my skin. It looks a little bit makeup-y, especially around my pores. And I do remember that about this foundation. That's why I rarely reached for it because it did that. It definitely gave me like strawberry skin, you know? So I don't know about this. I don't know if I will ever reach for this ever again or if this is going to be decluttered. And then the concealer. The concealer is interesting. I just need a different shade. This is way too light for me. I might pick this one up in a deeper shade, T3 instead of T1 maybe, or maybe T2, I'm not sure. Uh, I just think this could be a really good concealer. I just got the wrong shade, okay? And then the 100% pure bamboo blur powder. It's a good one, it's not bad, but I do have my Fit Glow one that I prefer a little bit more. Um, I think this still has done such a great job in keeping this foundation at bay. I know it does this like a slight white cast thing, but I can kind of get over that. Next product would be my Wild People Bio Baked Bronzer. This is stunning. I love this. I need to reach for this a lot more. This is really, really good. And this is going to go straight onto my desk. And then my Gabriel Cosmetics Blush. Stunning. I kind of forgot about it, but I knew it was a really good one and I love it. I really do enjoy this. Then my Danessa Myrex Highlighter Palette, really good. I gotta use this a lot more. I do want to play around with all of these other shades in here. I really have to say, 
it's it's really nice i am really curious how these other shades would work on my skin maybe not this one this one might actually be a little bit too deep for me this is good it's nice it's a really nice product moving on to the hourglass eye primer i gotta play around with this a little bit more it did not crease but it was also slightly drying and it was super annoying that it got into my eyelashes and then the airy paris brow products they are actually really good. I just don't like the fact that this is a crayon pencil for your eyebrows. I do prefer something that is shaped as a triangle or like overly shaped. I don't really like this too much, but it worked, it's okay. I like this, you know, but they need to update their shade range. Moving on to the loose of today, which is this Lime Crime palette. This is gonna get decluttered, you guys. This was awful. Like, these shimmers were the biggest disappointment ever. Like, what is happening? This eye look is not it. Fit Glow eyeliner and lip liner, pff, like, not the best formula in the world. I mean, am I mad at this? No. But would I, like, constantly, like, reach for this now? No. No, 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 no. Uh, Pacifica mascara is really, really good. I do enjoy this a lot. I think this is a really good kind of like more affordable mascara. And then last but not least, Wonder Beauty Lip Retreat Oil. It's amazing. I love the pigment. I love how this looks on my lips. This makes my lips look super juicy. It's just such a nice product. So I could be doing a lot more of these like videos. So if you like this kind of content, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, in case you have not yet and you made it this far into the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell in order to stay notified about my upcoming videos. And I shall be seeing you on here very, very soon with the next one. So please do take care. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.